Howdy YouTube, familiar sight today, the unboxing of a Harbor Freight tool. Gotten one or two comments about why I get so much stuff at Harbor Freight, and I can boil it down to just a couple of things. Uh, one, I'm cheap. Well, not just cheap, but value conscious, I guess is the way to, to put it. When I look around at most of the tools that are offered, I see they all roll off of the same Chinese assembly lines, unless you want to get into really, really high-end, truly professional industrial equipment. I bought lots of stuff at Rockler and Home Depot and Lowe's and Sears Craftsman stuff, and guess what? I've had to take a lot of it back, frankly, just as much as I've had to take back to Harbor Freight. While I definitely see differences in quality, and it varies a lot depending on the tool, don't, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of junk at Harbor Freight for sure, but for the most part, their kind of middle of the road stuff is almost as good as anyone else's. It's a lot cheaper. The Harbor Freight store happens to be closer to me than almost anyone else. And obviously, the price. Take this guy, for instance. This is a combination belt disc sander. I went for the smaller one because I don't know exactly how often I'm gonna use this thing. Um, and it is on sale right now for less than $80, which means if you dig around and look for the 20% off coupon, you're gonna get it for around 65, depending on what tax is like where you live. Sort of an impromptu purchase. It uh, was driven by a need that I have relative to a bandsaw box, which is something you guys will see soon. But before I can put it to use on that project, I gotta get it out of the box and up and running. So let's dig in. Instruction manual. Does anybody read these things, especially from Harbor Freight? 180 grit sanding disc. One reasonably flat aluminum disc onto which this sticks. I almost said miter gauge. That's a little bit like thinking lemon heads are a fruit. This is probably the last time you're gonna see this. Boom. One of the safety covers that I can already envision myself installing and then taking off later. This is the table for the disc sander. It is cast aluminum. It's heavier than I thought it was gonna be. Probably decide to flatten and deburr this as well as the disc. The fence slash guard for the belt sander. And the other half of the plastic safety guard that I'm unlikely to ever use. Wrenches, sort of goofy, open end, and Allen. And finally, the beast itself. All right, first things first, I'm gonna stick these feet on here. For giggles, I'm gonna plug this thing in and turn it on, having done nothing except stuck the rubber feet on it, because I wanna see, A, if the motor works and if it actually runs or makes some horrific noise before I go to the bother of assembling it. Um, and B, just because I think it'll be fun. Aha! Hear that? No movie. Yeah, believe it or not, YouTube, I'm not terribly concerned at this point. Uh, this is a common complaint with this particular unit online. People say that it has absolutely no power or that wouldn't start without pushing the belt or, or doing something like that. And all it is is that the motor is not where it ought to be. That the tension on the belt that drives this whole thing is just completely and totally wrong. Um, and or that the tension on this particular belt is completely and totally wrong. So let me take the cover off of this and we'll get the belt tension right, see if we don't have a little better luck. Luckily, today's free Harbor Freight gift was another magnetic parts holder. Well, as advertised, this belt was ridiculously tight. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even come close to pinching it together like this. So I've loosened up the motor bolts enough to, to slide the motor over a little bit. And honestly, I think I have it a little bit closer to perpendicular to the direction of travel of the belt. So let's give that a whirl and see what happens. Yeah, that's better. Typically when I'm setting the belt tension on something like this, the weight of the motor itself is a pretty good guide for how much pressure you wanna put on something like this. But on a small gizmo like this, the motor just isn't quite heavy enough to, to get the tension where I want it. I wanna be able to flex these belts, but I don't wanna be able to pinch them all the way together. So I'm gonna put this clamp on here and I'm putting just a little bit of pressure on it until I get the belt exactly where I want it. Then I'll go back and tighten down the motor bolts. Now once you've got the belt tightened to your satisfaction, get those bolts where they're not gonna move anymore. 
Okay, I'll put the belt guard back on at some point, I promise. But my next concern is getting this. This is the stop that goes essentially on the, the running end of the belt so that you have something you can put your work up against to really hog off material or uh, at least to keep whatever it is from sliding underneath this plastic guard and ripping it off. There's a bolt on the side of the sander. You take that off, put it through the bracket, and then these screws you have to take out of the bracket where they live and put them through the plastic piece. And my plastic guard came with some extra free plastic that's in the way of the threads. Now, I'll tell you straight away, the only reason at all to put any of this garbage on the saw is if you think you're gonna use this half inch port for dust collection. I'll say that again, half inch port for dust collection. Let me save you some headaches, you're not. If <laughs> you are not going to collect dust from a disc sander through a half inch port, you're just not. So it's up to you whether you wanna give it the old college try or not and uh, put this stuff on here and maybe at least have a, have a dust bin or something on the bottom. Well, I'll go ahead and put it on here for completeness, but uh, don't be surprised if you don't see it in too many future videos. Um, in fact, it's not even gonna make it to the next video because I just got to the step where I'm supposed to put this, which is the backing plate for the round disc sandpaper, onto this shaft. And while it is theoretically possible to do this and get up in there with this Allen key to get the thing tightened down on the shaft, what a pain. Okay, well, the YouTube safety police need something to do too, so do your worst, guys. Let me know how I'm gonna uh, kill myself, shoot my eye out, whatever it is I'm gonna do that's going to cause the sun not to come up tomorrow by not putting this plastic onto my sander. Um, in the meantime, I'm actually gonna get some work done. The paper for the sanding disc is self-adhesive. It's pressure-sensitive adhesive, in fact. So you need to get it on there the whole way around, but you don't need to really worry about cramming it because as you shove the workpiece into there and put pressure on it, it's gonna heat up and it's just gonna stick better and better and better all the time. And finally, there's ye old work table. I'm going to install this on the disc sander, but there is a mounting location for it around here on the back of the saw it, for when you want to stand the belt upright. One caveat though, this bracket we put in here earlier that holds the plastic guard in place and serves as your normal sort of just stop for this belt sander, you're probably going to have to take that off, which means the plastic guard is just going to flop around. So I've slipped it into the hole on the front of the unit and I just need to tighten down a bolt that's here on the side to hold it in place. Now with this table, there's a couple of things. You want it relatively close to the sandpaper because you want to be able to sand material and have it supported, not have it torn out. You also want the table to be square to the face of your sandpaper. That adjustment is real easy because the table is set up to tilt from 90 to 45 degrees. So get your square on there, get it loose, and then just tap it whichever way it needs to go to get it, get it nice and plumb. Here's the one thing that requires a little bit of dancing. As you tighten down the bolt that holds this whole assembly in place, it will pivot the table front and back just a little bit. So lock it down and then start adjusting it for square. And if you run into the sandpaper, you're gonna have to loosen it, back it out a little bit, tighten it down again, and kind of start over on the square adjustment. If you're having a terrible time getting this thing squared up, it's probably because it's just too stiff. There are two Allen keys that hold this to the rod that it pivots on. And if they're really clamped down, then you have to beat the heck out of this table to move it, which makes moving it in small increments next to impossible. Grab the Allen key, they're the same size as the ones that put this plate on, and just back them off a little bit until you can move this thing smoothly when the adjustment knob is loose. Now for me, I'm pretty sure I don't care about anything except 90 degrees for this sander. So I have clamped my square to both the sandpaper and to the table, and now I'm gonna tighten everything down so that it can't move. I'll start with the adjustment knob, then I'll go back and I'll make those Allen keys pretty tight. Something else to talk about, on the back of the belt sander, there is a dust collection port. This is advertised as a one and a half inch port, and it is on average. It's 1.4 inches inside diameter, 
and 1.6 inches outside diameter. Means nothing that's supposed to be an inch and a half fits on here. This is ye old standard small shop vac size hose. It's an inch and a quarter. It doesn't go in and it obviously won't slip over there. And certainly nothing bigger than this is gonna be any better. Couple that with the fact that this port snuggles nicely down in here behind the motor, between the mount and the motor, when the machine is horizontal, the way you're most likely gonna be using the belt sander attachment most of the time. Bottom line is we don't have a lot of options for getting hose in there. Let me show you the other thing about this dust port here. It's plugged up. Yeah, the end of this tube is not open. It has this plastic piece that has a couple of slots, one of which isn't even really cut out that well, and a small hole in the center. Now what the point of that is, I have no idea, but uh, about the first thing I'm gonna do is get my Dremel tool in there, and I'm gonna cut, at a minimum, where the slots are. Just cut the whole way around and take the middle of this out, and if I'm still not getting decent dust collection, I'll go back after the lip. Okay, well, I'm starting to get a recurring theme here of I need to do something about dust collection, and I'm gonna put it off until some other time. We're gonna do it again. I'm gonna put it off until some other time. What I wanna do right now is plug my fully assembled, except for the parts I'm not gonna put on it, sander in and make some dust. Gotta tell you that I'm pretty happy right now. Uh, my initial impressions of this, out of the box, first use are that it was totally and completely worth the $65 that it cost. It seems to have a decent motor on it. The switch seems to be fairly high quality and it's a very, very standard, very common switch. If it does break, it's gonna be an easy replacement. And to be honest with you, the only thing that really strikes me as Harbor Freight cheap out of the box is all the aluminum over here. This aluminum table, this aluminum disc here, uh, they're just not, you know, they're not cast iron. They're not the big, heavy, super flat stuff that you're gonna see on bigger, more expensive tools. But then, for me anyway, that's sort of the point of Harbor Freight. It's not a giant, expensive tool. It's small enough that it fits in my shop, it's cheap enough that it fits in my budget, and so far, five minutes worth, we'll see, right? But so far, it does the job I need to have done. Anyway, thanks for watching. While you're here on the page, please take the time to subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna get back to work on the bandsaw box so I can get the next video out. In the meantime, you guys stay safe, YouTube.